Hi, I'm Andy Markowitz from MusicFilmWeb.com, the online home of music documentaries. And we are here at Sound Out Records in Stockton on Tees, Northeast England, the last indie record shop in Teesside, subject of the fabulous documentary Sound It Out. Uh, we're here with Tom Butchert, the owner and philosopher king of Sound It Out Records, Jeannie Finley, who made the film, and loyal customer Shane Healy. Now, we should say the film that you spent, I think you said 18 months, almost pretty much on your own, hanging around the shop and shooting it, has now played all over the world. It opened at South by Southwest in Austin. It's played, by my count, a couple of dozen festivals in seven countries, Europe, US, Australia, UK. When you were making this movie, did you have any inkling, any sense of the reach and kind of reach and impact it was gonna have? It's all been really quick. I finished filming 11 months ago. And to be honest, I mean, it was funny when we were doing it, thinking about where it was going to go, but I th I thought that what I would do is make some DVDs for the people that sponsored the film, and we'd sell them in the shop, and we'd maybe do a local screening at um, the Riverside Festival or something like that, and then, and then that would be it. And when we got into South by Southwest, I kind of just went, oh, oh my God. Um, and it's been like a snowball, really. It's been kind of crazy, and... Just the emails I've got from people, it seems like people that like the film really like it, really connect with it. Um, so it's had an impact far and above anything that I ever thought it was going to do, ever. The thing I love about this shop is that it's not very tidy. <laughs> by that this, is, this is the tidy. <laughs> yeah. the, thing, the thing that I mean by that is there's a discovery to be had. What I like in here is you feel like there is a box of vinyl that you can go scurrying through and you're going to find a surprise you're going to find something amazing that you didn't know you wanted in the first place i wanted to ask tom <laughs> what was your first response what what's the first thing you said when Jeannie came to you and said i want to make a movie in your shop i want uh, to make a movie about you yeah okay <laughs> that was it really I've, I've done i mean i have been in one of Jeannie's films years ago and so oh I, yeah i forgot about that so and so i'm, I'm even though i don't like cameras i just think I, I knew i could just forget it was there and i was just like yeah fine and I knew that the joy of the customers wouldn't mind, because everyone who comes from record shops has got is a bit odd. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just it. Like, yeah, I, I, I had no uh, qualms about it at all. I was just yeah. like, yeah, anytime. I forgot you were in that film. Yeah. I made which, a which film? Well, was I was an terrible. artist for years. <laughs> I made um, large artworks for galleries and stuff, and then. Um, eight years ago yeah, nine years nine, ago maybe nine i made a short film called love takes which is about is people talking about their experiences of falling in and out of love and tom is one of my subjects my lovers <laughs> no i don't mean that he's one of the people in the film talking about love can i just for the record tom is not one of my lovers <laughs> past or present is. Tom, are you your your Stockton's Consumer Business of the Year? Do, are you uh, also now Stockton's number one tourist attraction? Um, quite possibly. I, I get, I do get a lot of people who are who are just in the area and they just come here. I had some uh, had some guys. Well, it was a boy and a girl came up from. They went to London. Then they heard about the shop and they came from London to here and from Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. And that's not unusual now. I get people from around the world coming in just to. They were, we were in Stockton, so we thought we'd come and see you. Which is a bit crazy, I find. And, the, and they said it's because of the film, because of the... Yeah, it's because of the film, or they've heard about the film and they want to come and see what it's like. And they've heard of people that it's like, you have to go there. And so, yeah, we get a lot of people who just have to come in, in and have a look anyway, which is just bonkers. Now, Shane, did Tom or anyone give you guys any warning that there was going to be somebody filming in the store, that this was happening, or did you guys sort of just wander in as you normally do and, and find a red-haired lady with a camera? Normally, come off night shift, come down here on the morning, have a look through the, through the box. I saw, I walked in the shop, saw the camera. Ah, this is Jeannie. She'd like to make a film. <laughs> I'm like, in no other words. And it was from there on in. Did you, did the, the scene of you being introduced in the film, was that that day? Did you talk to her the first time, or did yeah. it take a little while? Yeah, it's, we, we spoke on that day because Jeannie had already been given information about my core, core collection. Mm -hmm. So it was a case of information from then on in that led to Jeannie interviewing me. So. And what did you think? Did you have any qualms or uncertainties? At the or time, you... I was thinking, well, somebody wants to interview me about quote. <laughs> uh, and then you get to the point of, 
what the hell, why not? You know, you only get one shot in life. And recently I've had a few bad turns, you know, with family health and what have you. So I thought, what the hell? You know, make the most of it. And have you lived to regret it? No. It's, <laughs> you do get the odd people. I've been up to Newcastle and Manchester, and, I, and you get these people. You're the bloke out the sound. You're the bloke. You're the cool lad. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's me. So? Brilliant. I was like, right, fine, <laughs> thank you. you well, folks who haven't seen the movie, explain a little bit why you're the Quo lad. Uh, basically, I've followed Quo since I was, what, 11, 12. Uh, got into it by accident. How the Quo came into my being, into my record collection, I'll never know. Um, but from there on in, it was a case of got taken to my first Quo gig and... Then when I had enough money in the bank and I was working, started off following the quo all over and started with one or two in a year and then it grew to eight, nine, ten. And it then gets to a stage where you're just doing as many as you can. How many? Uh, at the moment, I'm just about to break my 400 barrier. Mercy. Yeah. So, still waiting, but this year I'll, this year I'll break it. Coming here and I enjoy music, full stop. Doesn't matter. Yes, I like me quote, but at the end of the day, I like all my genres. And if I can come in here and I can find a record, take it home, put it on the player at home, that's me done. I'm happy. Yeah. And it beats going out, getting drunk. Did you develop any sixth sense about people when you were making the film? I mean, was your procedure to go up to everybody, or did you get sort of a radar oh, no. and go like, mm, nah, he's nice, but not, no, not him? Uh, there were some people who were fantastically entertaining, in inverted commas, who would know that I was filming and would turn up and start being hilarious and gregarious and so funny. And then I would go, oh, my camera's not working. <laughs> Put the camera away. Um, for me, the people that don't want to be in a film are always the people that you want in a film because they've maybe got more to say. So, Tom, you talk in the film about the difference for records for you. Mm. You say that records records hold memories. Mm -hmm. So, pick an example. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Something in the shop. Tell me, pick a, pick a record out of the stack somewhere there's and tell me what the memory is. There's a special three record over there, Perfect Prescription. I remember exactly what I was doing. That the first time I ever heard that, I know exactly what I was doing. I was, it was a Sunday afternoon, and went, we played it, went to Preston Park. It was, there you go. That's, that was 20 years ago. I was like 18. And we went and played softball in the park. <laughs> that was the first time I ever heard that record before. That's that's just one record. I can pick up records and go, oh, remember, remember this, remember that. Remember going to Glastonbury. Remember being a chef in the waiting room in 1990. I think John Peel was on the radio because he did a lunchtime show, and he was playing German techno, and it was amazing. <laughs> and playing old records, and you know, I can I can go around and just pick up records and say what I was doing and. What's the quality of vinyl for you that makes it different? Because, I mean, we're all music fans here. Mm. And as music fans, is there not something, something to be said for being able to get something so that you see it, it's there, you want it, it's, you know, you're getting it. I hope we all are getting it legally. It's cheap. I don't like MP3s. I don't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> what don't you trust about them? <laughs> it's, it's the sound quality. is rubbish. I don't, I, I don't like them. I've got hard drives full of MP3s, which uh -huh. I've never played. And they go on iTunes and... And you pay to download it, and then you, and then it's it's there on the computer, and I'm like, well, I'm never gonna play it. I might play it once and skip it. Mm -hmm. Well, if I put a record on, I've got to play it all the way through, even if it's awful. I mean, it's been a bit of a weird year. What mm. I would want to know is what, what's it been like being in the film? I mean, the most, you're getting married now, yeah. and you've been engaged for. Four years, I think. Yeah. What did Claire make of seeing the film? Because she, obviously, she comes in here and she knows... Well, Claire doesn't come in here very often. She comes and picks me up at work, but she refuses to come in here sometimes. It's too messy, she says. Rubbish. <laughs> um, Claire loves it. Her whole family adore it. She had a private script. She took the DVD and had made all the aunties sit there and watch it, and they all loved it and bought copies of it and sent it around the UK <laughs> and Ireland. Seeing you in the film, whether that's changed her understanding of your world and what you do all day long. Which is sit on the seat and play records. <laughs> um, no, I, yeah, I think she knows actually I do work and I do actually 
work. Is I think before Angie thought I just actually sat around and played records, which is what I do, but I do sell them and research them and go go slowly insane listening to them and such. And I think she understands me more. I, th- I think that's a pretty good outcome. <laughs> you know, obviously it's not why you make a film, but I think as an outcome that's pretty yeah. good. 